Hi everybody, welcome back. This is our first video in Unit 6. Unit 6 is gases and one of my personal favorite units. And today we're talking about Boyle's Law. So in the last set of videos we talked about Unit 5, stoichiometry, and all that other fun calculation stuff. But again, like I said before, today we're going to cover um, Boyle's Law and that uh, looks into the relationship between pressure and volume in gases. So this dude right there, his name is Robert Boyle. And so he is known for discovering the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas. So he, you know, saw that when you doubled the pressure, the volume was reduced in half. And so basically what this says is that volume um, and pressure are inversely related while temperature is kept constant. So what that means is that if volume goes up, pressure goes down. Or if volume goes down, pressure goes up. And so this GIF does a great job explaining it. All these little black circles represent the uh, gas particles. And so obviously there is no gas particles leaving or exiting, so there's the same number of particles. But when you put more masses on top of the moving red plunger, you're adding more and more pressure. So the more pressure that's added, the closer and closer and closer these molecules get. And so the smaller the volume is. As soon as that weight is being removed, the pressure is being relieved. And so the gas particles are able to spread out more. So this inverse relationship is super important between volume and pressure. So again, an inverse relationship means if one very variable goes up, the other one goes down. So here again, you see pressure being added to this tube, pushing and compressing the gas molecules as that pressure is being added. And you can see it kind of move here. The volume gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Again, the reverse is the same as well. So if the pressure was to be relieved or you know, decreasing, the volume increases. So applications of Boyle's Law, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, one of them is breathing. And so you have your lungs and this muscle right underneath it is your diaphragm. So when the diaphragm um, is moved down, the volume increases, decreasing the pressure. And when the diaphragm goes up, uh, pressure increases, volume decreases. And that pressure difference allows you to breathe and inhale air into your lungs and then move it where it needs to go. So breathing is one of the most important applications of Boyle's Law. Um, if you're scuba diving, this is a huge one. And so every 10 meters you go down, you have one atmosphere of pressure being added onto you. So the further you go down, the more and more pressure is on you underwater. And so when your body is under pressure underwater, different things happen. And when we get to solutions, we'll talk about gas solubility and bring this up again. But <clears throat> there is this table. So if you are an avid scuba diver, you know exactly what this is. But what this tells you is that depending on how far you go down and how deep you dive, you can't just swim back up immediately. You have to come up very slowly, very gradually. Um, this is so your lungs literally don't burst. This is also why they say do not hold your breath when you're going scuba diving. And so we'll see these different things later on. Um, but Boyle's Law and scuba diving, they go hand in hand. Um, another cool fun fact, going into these, um, staying with like the marine theme, um, different animals, they're meant to go down way deeper than um, humans can swim down. But for example, an elephant seal, which is this one, they can dive down pretty deep. And what happens is that the pressure under the water is so great, it literally causes their lungs to collapse. But these elephant seals are fine because they're built for that. They actually have much, much, much larger spleens and blood volume. So even though the lungs are crushed, you still have a bunch of oxygenated blood being able to move throughout the body. So cool little marine mammals. Uh, fun fact. So if we're going to, and really what's more important with this is the calculations. So again, we have this inverse relationship and it's shown by this equation. And so... These equations are before and after situations. So you have, you know, your before, your uh, initial pressure and volume, and your after, your P2 and V2, pressure and volume 2. So in these calculations, you'll be given three out of the four variables, 
It's your job to find the fourth one. As long as you write down your knowns, your unknowns, and kind of stay organized, this is on the simpler end of calculations. So just to kind of show you some units, there's a bunch of pressure units, there's a bunch of volume units. So more importantly, pressure. Uh, you'll see ATM, which means atmosphere, not at the moment. We'll see something called tor, millimeters of mercury, and kPa, which is kilopascals. All of those are units of pressure, and you might see them um, throughout the different videos. Um, for volume, generally you'll see liters, milliliters, cubic centimeters. Those are the kind of top three you'll see. Um, so up until this point, another you know thing we need to mention is STP. So up to this point, if you saw STP in a question, I said, you know, hey, don't worry about it. It means nothing until we get to gases. Well, we're in gases, it means something there. So again, STP means standard temperature and pressure. And uh, table A has these values for you. So you don't need to remember them. But you need to remember that STP actually means different numbers. You have to remember to go to check in table A. So if you see standard pressure in a question, it's talking about this. And so there are two different values you could use, 101.3 kPa or 1 atm. Now, generally you want to keep your units consistent throughout a question. So if a question gives you KP, uh, kPa, well then you're going to use 101.3. If the question gives you atm, you're going to you know use atm. Keep, be consistent with your unit. If you have the option to choose, it does not matter which one you use. Okay. So let's jump into some questions. We have three questions we're going to work through together, um, and then we'll call it a day. So example one says, container holds 500 mils of CO2 gas at 742 torr. What will be the volume of CO2 if the gas, of the gas if the pressure is increased? So let's predict first. The question says that the pressure is increasing. So based on what we know, if pressure increases in this inverse relationship, what should happen to volume? So what's your prediction? So if, we, if we're going to predict this, if pressure increases, volume should decrease. So that's our prediction. And so let's start this. And so what you're going to want to do is list out your given. So P1, V1, P2, V2. And so we're given 500 mils. So that's our volume one at 742 torr. So again, that is a pressure unit. What will be the volume? So we're looking for this if the pressure is increased to that. So assigning your knowns and unknowns is one of the most important parts. And so now, once you have all of that listed, and I like the two different column method, let's plug it into this formula. So we have 742 torr times 500 mils equals 795 torr times V2. So we're going to do some math. 742 times 500 is 371,000 equals 795 V2. To get V2 by itself, divide by 795. And we get V2 to be 467. And again, our unit for volume is going to be mLs. And so that is our answer. And so now we predicted volume decreasing, and we started with 500, we're ending with 467. Does our calculated answer make sense? You should say yes. And we don't know what exactly we, it should be, but if you know the relationship, you know that uh, if one thing is increased, the other one should decrease. Again, that's literally the definition of an inverse relationship. And that's it. You're done. Um, you also see if we are tracking the units. Uh, we have tor times ml. This is just tor. So when you divide it, all of your units cancel again, except for what you're looking for. Okay, number two, it says a cylinder with a movable piston. This is really just saying something like a syringe. So you're able to kind of change the volume. Uh, contains a sample of gas having a volume of six liters at STP. What's the volume? when the pressure is decreased to 0 0.7 atm. So again, we're going to list out P1, V1, P2, V2. And it says we have six liters. 
So that is our volume. What is the volume? So we're looking for V2. When the sample it, pressure is decreased to 0 0.72 atm. Now I told you that you'd be given three out of these four variables and you'd have to calculate the fourth one. But as of right now, it's like, uh, where is P1? But this is what I was talking about. This is the key part. It's telling you that you're starting at STP. And so if you go back to the two slides, we can use 101.3 kPa or we can use 1 atm. But it's best to use the context clues in your question to figure out which one you should use. And so if we're ending an atm, that means we should start an atm. And so we have that one. So again, this number is coming from STP. STP actually means something. And so now we're just going to plug in to this formula. So we get 1 times 6 equals 0 0.72 times B2. So you get 6 equals 0 0.72 divided. Before we do this, um, let's just make our prediction. Uh, it says pressure is decreasing. What should happen to the volume? And so our prediction, if pressure is decreasing, our volume should increase. And let's finish up our calculation and see that. 6 divided by 0.72, V2 is 8.3, and our unit is liters. So again, we predicted an increase in volume. We got an increase in volume. So does our answer make sense? The answer is yes. And that's it. The hardest part really for these questions is identifying your different variables, but as long as you stay organized, it will um, make sense. Okay, last question. A cylinder with a movable piston contains 4.5 liters sample of the gas at STP. What is the pressure of the sample when the volume is changed to 2.9 liters? Assume constant temperature. Okay, so first let's make our prediction. It says volume is decreasing. So our prediction, prediction, if volume decreases, our pressure should increase. So let's see. Now you have P1, V1, P2, V2. And so let's just look at the numbers that we have. We have 4.5 liters. We have change to 2.9 liters. And that's it. But it, t it tells us that we're at STP. But we don't know what pressure to use because it doesn't give it to us. And so the regions will give you either, you know, clues in the question or the answer key will tell you something. But for right now, for us, um, we can choose whichever one we want. So if we're starting at STP, let's start with the ATM. And we're, we'll do it both ways. Um, so if you use ATM, that means your answer will be an ATM. And so if we plug everything in, we have 1 times 4.5 equals P2 times 2.9. 4.5 equals P2 times 2.9 divided by 2.9 divided by 2.9. You know we get 1.6 ATM. And so that is a completely valid answer. Now if you wanted to, we could have used the other um, pressure for STP. So again, it does not matter. You're going to get a different number because they're different units, but it works 4.5, 2.9. Again, we're looking for that. And we could have used 101.3 kPa. So that's the other standard pressure. Uh, so again, if you have the option to choose, you can choose. Um, if I have the option, I like using that one because it's a smaller number. But whatever makes you happy. Uh, and then we're just going to plug that in. We have our P1, our V1, equals P2 times 2.9. Um, we get 455.85 times P2 times 2.9. Divide 2.9, divide 2.9. We get 1.57. If we're going to use sync things, uh, we get 160. And now our unit is kPa. So yes, you have different numbers. But that's expected because you have completely different units. And just another thing I want to point out quickly is that I use significant figures at the end. If these are multiple choice questions that you see, 
Like if you get 157 on your calculator, but you don't see that answer, um, remember the Regents uses significant figures as their answer choices. So if you get 157 and you don't see it, but you see 160, that is why. So that's pretty much it. Again, we'll take some time to practice in class, but it's just following that same kind of um, routine. Uh, next video, we'll talk about Charles' Law, which is the relationship between temperature and volume. And we'll kind of do the same thing, a little background, some questions, and we'll call it a day. So that is it for this video. Have a wonderful day.